This is different from a normal commencement where usually the speaker comes in and offers some inspiration. I come here to receive inspiration from the class of the University of Texas of 2010. The women and men sitting in this room can restore our bruised and battered society because you've already started. You know, your generation, I find, I teach at Georgetown, as Dean Sager said, and I find that your generation is imbued with an ethic of service and a faith in the future and a culture of positive action that just it blows me away. And it's very different from my generation, I have to tell you. You are the people Dr. King was thinking of when he said what other centered, what rather what self-centered people have torn down, other centered people can build up. And we see that wreckage of self-centered people all around, as I mentioned, in business, in government, in sports, in the law. But if we look more carefully, we can also see the rebuilding efforts of other centered people. And we don't have to look very far. The women and men of the class of 2010 of the University of Texas School of Law have already helped represent some of the most despised and detested men on death row who may have lacked adequate legal representation. And so because of you, the system that Justice Blackman once called the machinery of death runs a little bit more fairly. The men and women of the class of 2010 at the University of Texas School of Law have already used the power of law to defend the defenseless, victims of domestic violence and abuse. And so because of you, the most vulnerable people in our society had a strong and fearless champion. The men and women of the class of 2010 at the University of Texas School of Law have already put the majesty of the law to work in service of those the poet called, the tired, the poor, the huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shores. And so because of you, those immigrants who have been used as political pinatas now have someone to defend their inalienable rights. The women and men of the class of 2010 of the University of Texas School of Law have already helped my nieces and nephews growing up on the Gulf Coast to breathe just a little bit easier. Because of you, the rule of law cannot be bought or bent or broken by those who would poison our air and our water and our earth. The women and men of the University of Texas School of Law of the class of 2010 have stepped in to defend children abused by their parents, renters abused by their landlords, poor people abused by the system. And so because of you, justice means more than just us rich folks. And so when I despair of the mess that has been made of the country I love, that despair does not last long. Just as the founders rose to the challenge when lawyers wrote our Constitution, just as the greatest generation saved the world and then lawyers saved the rule of law at Nuremberg, I have faith that the lawyers in this room, you men and women of the class of 2010, will do great things because you have already done them. So how could I be cynical in the presence of such people? Well, I can't, and neither should you. You know, when I worked in the White House, there was one thing on my wall in my office, and only one, that was not a, a picture of a fish I caught or a deer I shot or the family I love, just one. It was a portrait of Barbara Jordan. In that picture, she had her right hand raised to make a point, and she was nearly lifting herself out of her wheelchair, Ben Jager, by the sheer force of her will. And I put that on my office wall in the White House to remind me every day. And when I looked at her photo, she inspired me as she inspired students on this campus years ago, one of whom I married. And what she would say to me, have faith. Have faith. Anytime I got down, I would look at that image of Barbara Jordan and my faith would be sustained and restored. How could it not be? She did not serve in a heroic time. She served during a constitutional crisis and a deep recession. Cynicism would have been richly justified in Barbara Jordan. And yet, at the worst moment, she gave her greatest speech and she told us, my faith in the Constitution is whole. It is complete. It is total. Now, Barbara Jordan was a lawyer, and more importantly, she was a believer. She rests in peace and in honor now in the State Cemetery on 7th Street. You can walk to it from here, and I highly recommend it. Because you know who's right next to her? Ben McCullough, a, a Texas revolutionary and a Civil War general 
who died for the proposition that men like Ben McCullough could own women like Barbara Jordan, and yet she believed in that country. What a testament of faith. For all of our mistakes and all of our shortcomings and all of our sins and all of our transgressions, Barbara Jordan looked at this country and felt faith to the depth of her soul and to the end of her life. And so you think about that now, class of 2010. If Barbara Jordan, born African American and female and poor in a time and a place where none of those things were big benefits, and she could have that kind of faith in our Constitution, who are we to doubt today? If she could have that kind of faith in our country in the darkest hours of the Republic, who are we to despair today? So here's the deal. You're going to come up here, we're going to give you a bright, shiny new law degree, and you will apply it to the challenges of this very angry and cynical time. And so here's my only piece of advice to you. Have faith. Have faith in your country. Have faith in God. Have faith in our Constitution. Have faith in the rule of law. Have faith in this proud university and this remarkable law school, in the professors who inspired you and the colleagues who challenged you and the parents, grandparents, siblings, and friends who sustained and supported you. And most of all, have faith in yourself. I do. My faith in you and in the class of 2010 of the University of Texas School of Law is whole. It is complete. It is total. God bless you all. Hook them horns. I now can't imagine how we lost that case before Harley Clark. <laughs> um, and in addition to giving my heartfelt thanks, and I'm sure the thanks of all of us, to Paul Begala for that wonderful talk. I'd like to give him a small concrete token of our appreciation, a plaque commemorating the talk. We're now going to proceed with the uh, pinning of sunflowers and the distribution of diplomas, the moment we're all here for. Dean Ramos is going to perform the heroic uh, venture of introducing each of the graduates, and Deans Dickerson, Ingram, Montoya, and Fortune will undertake this sometimes precarious job of pinning sunflowers. And Paul and I will congratulate uh, the graduates as they come across the stage.